Back on Weekend Magazine here on 800 CJBQ. If you were listening last week, we had part one of an interview with a 1980s metal rock guitarist, a very talented one, David Scott, part of a group from Florida called Tough Luck, who had an opportunity for a couple of record contract deals that didn't quite work out. All the reviews of the band Tough Luck, tons of talent, tons of potential, great writing, and a group that worked together with uh, Kenny Monroe on lead vocals, David Scott, the guitarist, James Marino on bass, and the late Todd Kelly on drums. If you listen to part one of the interview, we talked a little bit about the new documentary that the drummer uh, Todd Kelly's brother has come out with that's getting some international reviews and on the line from Florida with us uh, for the second straight week, David Scott. Thank you for taking the time, David. And when we left off, we were talking about the band and where they were as far as trying to break out and, and get that international recognition. If you can tell us about the frustrations that go through uh, a band, no matter what genre it is, of just trying to get noticed, especially when you feel you have all the ingredients to make it successful? Well, for us, a, a big part of that frustration was just where we lived. We were so far from everything, and um, we eventually did relocate um, to, to New York, but I think it, we just did it too late. You know, By the time we were in New York and we were right in the backyard of all the record labels and doing our thing, Music was really starting to change, and I don't know if some of your listeners know this, but heavy metal really started to um, become unfashionable when grunge music became popular and, and bands like Nirvana and the big Seattle scene hit, and it became almost impossible at that point. You know, it'd be like in the 50s if you were in a doo-wop band, and then the Beatles all of a sudden were the were the biggest thing. You know, your, your doo-wop band was... There was almost no chance at that point of of getting a record contract. On the line with David Scott from Florida, part of the group Tough Luck, a documentary just uh, has been released over the last uh, little while. Velocity Films has put it out, a documentary on the band that was trying to make it. You talk about moving up to New York City. When you're trying to make it, and perhaps you see groups that are trying to do the same thing with you, maybe perhaps not quite as talented, get the record deal because they're in the right place or they do the right thing. Does that get frustrating or does that cause a bit of turmoil in a musical group oh yeah it really does especially when it's when it's people you know even if they're your friends you know you you have friends in other bands that you of course you want them to succeed of, of course when you hear they got a record deal you're excited for them but you can't help ask the question well what about us you know we we were allowed around a lot longer than them or we, we felt like we you know we put in a lot more work than they did or you know, it's, there's always that what about us kind of feeling when you're working so hard at something and you don't see a result. It became extremely frustrating, and we we actually reached a point where we were starting to turn against each other, you know, pointing the finger at, you know, uh, what's, what's going wrong here? Maybe it's you, maybe it's me. It, it became really tough, really tough. And we were young, so we weren't the most mature guys in the world, you know, I... Uh, it, I spent most of that time in that band between 18, 19, 20 years old. So I, I definitely had a lot to learn as as um, as a person just to, to be able to, to be in a marriage with three other people. It's very hard. David, you had a couple of opportunities. Tell us about the discussions with one producer who had connections to the Allman Brothers, uh, to Leonard Skinner, to Aretha Franklin, and kind of how that situation went down. Well, you know, all those names you just named, we didn't really know that at the time. This was a guy who was so humble that when he came into our rehearsal room, we were rehearsing at a place that was a big place with multiple rooms, multiple rehearsals and recordings going on in different places. This guy knocked on our door and introduced himself, but never... We didn't know his name, and he never really was a name dropper and said, you know, I, I worked with Aretha Franklin, and I worked with these people. So he just said, I like what you're doing, and I'd love to, I'd love to produce you. And um, we, we never gave this guy the chance. And uh, one of my biggest regrets, because it turned out to be Tom Dowd, one of the most successful producers in the record business. But um, he was so humble and didn't name drop that... Um, he just looked. He just came across like a guy that knocked on our door and said, "Hey, you guys are good. Let me help you out." And we we said, "Well, who's this?" Only to find out later that um, he's a legendary rock producer. 
Tough Luck is a group of uh, rock and rollers and and, uh, what you would call kind of part of that metalhead scene of the early 80s. And now Velocity Films has come out with a new movie documenting uh, this group. I wanted to ask you, David, about uh, quickly again about the passing of your drummer, Todd Kelly, and how that changed things. Because you, you pointed out being at a young age that some of these things, maybe if you, if you had had the, the right direction from somebody a little older or who knew the business uh, could help out. But how did Todd's passing change things musically or emotionally or, or where you were in life as, as a guitarist with Tough Luck? Well, musically, I, I instantly just, um, you know, I, I started playing a totally different style of music. I, um, I think maybe that was my first attraction to the, to the blues and a lot of sadder music. As you know, metal has a little bit more angst, a little more anger to it. Um, so the, definitely it affected my musical taste and, and style just because of the emotions I was feeling. But um, also my, my head was spinning. I, you know, I now... I only heard about things like that on the news. I, I had a friend who was murdered at that point and um and really didn't know how to pick up the pieces. You know, I didn't I didn't know how to how to move past that. I you know, I self medicated a little bit and and um but ultimately it was music that kept me going and, and having some good friends around me that also wanted to play. And uh, we we just kept on going and, and I think that's what Todd would have wanted us to do. And to this day I still play music to make a living. David, did everything go right with the band except stardom? Did you feel everything that you had done you had accomplished other than the the fame and fortune of 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 music? Not entirely. I I wish looking back on it now, I wish I would have been a little more open-minded to um pave our own way musically and not um be so concerned with what was happening in the world and what was what was becoming famous because I think we followed a few trends and that may have hurt us you know um some of the most successful bands in the world are leaders they they don't look at the trends they don't care they do what they want to do I wish I had a little bit more of that when I was 19 years old on the line with guitarist uh, of Tough Luck, David Scott, a new movie has come out about the 80s metal band that had all the talent in the world, just not in the right place at the right time. But we talk about the fact that now a documentary about the band has come out. How has this changed your life? Well, um, it, it hasn't really. I'm still going to, going to work every night and playing. Uh, definitely there's, there's some people that have reached out to me that I haven't talked to in years, from even from other countries that might have had our record and and that's a great thing but i'm hoping i'm hoping more comes from it we're going to we're going to play a show in november we haven't played together in a, in in 30 years and um you know we we've re-released the music for people to buy and you can you can get the music on bandcamp um you can i i put out an instrumental record from that time that i had kind of shelved for a while and that you can get that on itunes so some of the music's become available and um we're just hoping people can enjoy um, whatever it was that we did 30 years ago. For people that may not necessarily have an interest in the style of music, but are music fans, what can they expect from the documentary on Tough Luck? They can expect a, um, a story that takes you on a journey of a band with all the ups and downs. Um, and uh, you, you'll learn a lot about what the music business is like. Uh, well, I shouldn't say the music business, what, it, what it's like to try to get into the music business. Sometimes I, I wonder if we were even in the music business. We were like on the outside, banging the door, trying to get in. And because that happens to thousands and thousands of bands, I think it's an interesting story for people to watch. And, and a lot of people said to me, why would you make a story, why would you make a film about a band that didn't succeed? Because, and I, my answer to that is every documentary I've ever seen has been on a successful band, not an unsuccessful band. So I, I think that that's our twist here. That's what makes this story so interesting. On the line with David Scott from Tough Luck, the 80s metal band, a brand new documentary has come out. Thank you for joining us from Florida today, telling a bit of the story, but not giving away too much about what the movie has. We appreciate your time today, David. Thank you so much.